ceremony of the Paralympic Games is now with us here. How quickly it has come around. This is very much a festival. The festival of the flame. We will witness the flame going out at the appropriate time in the closing tonight. It's been an absolutely magnificent number of days leading up to this spectacle after what seemed like only yesterday where we viewed the spectacle of the opening ceremony. An absolute sellout, of course, for tonight's spectacle. Talking to Sue Malcolm earlier on this evening, one of our volunteers here at Ladies the International Paralympic Committee was saying it's very much based on a pagan. She's a professor at the UCL, a graduate from Oxford. The volunteers have done an absolutely splendid job here across all venues Ten, throughout the Olympic Park. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So here we have part number one of the running order, wind, storm this evening. The Festival of Flame pays tribute to the gatherings that infuse the spirit of our nation. 
we'll be reminded about the irresistible power of music to draw us together, as it does at world-renowned festivals up and down the UK. From Kinross, Belfast, and the Brecon Beacons, to Glastonbury and the Isle of Wight. Festivals occur all over the world when people and communities come together as one to enjoy the best of human entertainment and creativity. During the pre-show, the athletes took their places in seating areas around the field of play and are part of the ceremony from the outset. There are three circular stages here and at one end of the stadium stand the Agitos, the symbol of the Paralympics. Three crescents are made of giant inflatables that have been tethered to the ground. They've been tethered to the ground by a group of characters called the Dreamers, who are all asleep. Hornblowers signal the wind is coming, and the Dreamers wake up from their sleep to protect the Agitos. Huge fans are mounted on motorbikes ridden by the wind gremlins. They appeared in the stadium bringing noise and wind with them. The dreamers battle against the might of the wind to prevent the Agitas from being blown away. As the storm escalates, the Agitas are lost and fly into the night sky alone with one of the dreamers who gets blown away with them. All the sound of the wind, horns and chants increases. The wind shows no sign of calming and the storm is on its way. A huge smoke cloud appears at the end of the stadium. And 68 performers entered carrying flares. They're followed by 54 drummers who process into position. The dreamers represent our dreams, ideas, passion and goals. The wind gremlins represent our internal demons who dampen our spirit and put out the fires inside us.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome into the stadium His Royal Highness the Earl of Wessex, patron of the British Paralympic Association and the president of the International Paralympic Committee, Sir Philip Craven. So moving on to raising of the flag in moments to come. I'm now joined here in the commentary box by Katrina Webb. Good evening, Katrina. Good evening. How are you Ladies going? And gentlemen. I'm good, thank you. And how are you? I'm going fantastic. Can, it's very exciting, this ceremony. The national anthem of the United Kingdom. And that was Lisa Hermans, who is blind and autistic, and she sang the national anthem from the Sundial stage. She made history when she became the first person ever to release the national anthem as a single to mark the Queen's Diamond Jubilee this year. Unlike the other ceremonies of the Games, the 4,200 athletes are seated before the ceremony begins. They are seated in and around the field of play, putting them at the very heart of the action here. This is Rory McKenzie, who has walked to the top of the steps of the Sundial stage, and he's about to address the crowd. Through help for the heroes, Rory McKenzie has been able to indulge his passion for extreme sports, including skiing. Sure.